Hello, Julia Kahn. I'm Lars Helmo. I will present joint work with my colleague Tyrus Flatbag on efficient sparse modeling with jump. Sintef is uh, a Norwegian research institute and we work in one of the optimization groups there uh, where we mostly do modeling of um, problems from different sectors using mixed integer linear programming. And uh, over the years we have mostly been using commercial modeling systems uh, but we are nowadays moving more and more towards open source alternatives, uh, in particular Jump and Julia. And we have several other projects going on uh, using Julia and we hope to come back to present those later. Of course we love Julia and Jump for all the usual reason reasons. It's fast, expressive, elegant, it's also fun and hackable. But uh, we are competing with the commercial modeling systems, which are known to be very efficient for sparse structures and large models. And with Jump, we have run into a couple of performance and usability snags. Uh, while there are some uh, workarounds available, those tend to be verbose and lacking in functionality. So given that uh, Julia is so fun and hackable, can we uh, improve this situation ourselves? We'll use this uh, small um, uh, supply chain problem as an illustration throughout the talk and to consider different ways to model this with Jump. So I'll just walk you quickly through it. We have a company producing uh, different products called P from a set of, of uh, factories F uh, serving customers C uh, in time periods T. And uh, we have to satisfy a given demand D um, by producing with a non-negative decision variable X. So in addition to the uh, 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 demand satisfaction constraints, we also have an upper limit on the production from um, the uh, factories, which is called U, and we also have a transport capacity, which is called V, which we have to stay below. Finally, we have some constraints on which factories can produce each product and that's given by the compatibility parameter w and if that's set to zero then the corresponding x variable has to be zero as well. So let's first have a look at what we call the standard or you might even call it the naive approach which is to don't worry about the um, sparsity and just add the extra variables and add some constraints and let the solver take care of the rest. So as you can see here we define the variables x over the full sets and uh, we add the demand satisfaction constraint uh, and if there is no demand then we just set it to zero and for the variables that are not compatible uh, with this uh, w set to zero, then we add a constraint setting the corresponding variable also to zero. And this works, it takes about 250 milliseconds uh, for this specific set of test inputs. So let's see what we can do if we want to improve this to uh, be able to do larger models faster. Uh, so if you want to just construct the variables that we're actually going to use. One widely used workaround is to create anonymous variables like this and add them into a dictionary uh, when they are compatible like this. Uh, so that works nice but when we are going to add the, all the constraints then it's a bit awkward to do the lookup and we end up filtering a set of uh, valid indices like this. So this works, uh, but it's not so nice, but it's uh, quite a bit faster. In this, in this case, it's around 45 milliseconds, uh, which is nice improvement. We also have a similar idea where you can just bundle the uh, valid indices uh, in tuples and uh, create the uh, uh, decision variables uh, over those um, tuples. And that also works, but you run into the same problem when you wanted to add the constraints and uh, we have to do some filtering of a set of valid indices to uh, create the correct constraints. Uh, so this is uh, also has a similar performance with 51 milliseconds. So if we really want to do uh, fast model construction, the best way that we found for this particular problem was to build the left hand side incrementally. So 
We also have uh, anonymous variables, but we, in this case, we also have some dictionaries with the left-hand sides, and then we add the terms uh, iteratively to those terms before we finally uh, construct the constraints themselves. Uh, this is the fastest approach so far. It's uh, below 10 milliseconds for this uh, set of inputs. So using the sparse variables package, uh, which uses the dictionaries.jl dictionaries under the hood, we find it to be uh, more expressive and convenient. You can uh, do uh, sparse variables like this. Um, this in, uh, in initializes uh, empty sparse variable and then uh, where you have compatibility you can insert or create the new variables um, like this when you want to add the constraints you can um, use slicing like this which gives you neat and short sums uh, and as you can see the full code now fits uh, in one screen and the um, performance is almost well, it's uh, around the same as the other uh, workarounds with uh, 40 milliseconds for this uh, particular case. So what happens if we increase the problem size? So let's uh, add a larger number of customers. And you can see that for the normal, the standard uh, approach, uh, it uh, gets quite a bit slower, 3 seconds. While the sparse uh, variables approach is quite a bit faster than the two other workarounds, yet not as fast as the incremental model building. We can also try to var have variations in how sparse the problem is, and we do this by selecting a subset of the uh, combinations of customers, products and T's that actually have demand. So on the left here you see the most sparse problems, and on the right are the not sparse uh, problems and the standard um, uh, modeling approach is more or less the same over this span of, of uh, sparsity values um, and you can see that all of the approaches to sparse modeling uh, do much better for the very sparse problems but at some point you can see that the two um, to workarounds, they cross over and you have to do more work in the um, filtering than you gain by uh, reducing the number of variables. Uh, whereas the sparse variable stays below the normal or standard uh, approach uh, all the way, uh, yet not as fast as the incremental um, uh, build, model building. So please check sparse variables out. Uh, we hope it can be useful. Uh, play with it, uh, give us feedback or PRs, or even better, steal uh, and improve our IDs and integrate into Jump properly.